Yeah, I mean, it's, come on. How many realtors are in uh, in Haverhill? Oh, there's. I looked it up. There's 842 million part-time realtors in Haverhill. I looked it up. <laughs> Haverhill. Uh, yeah, uh, no. Though, I said there's a lot of people like not in not from the vantage point of a normal person. If you're new, there's not a lot of people. There's sub. Uh, there's probably in in the in the niche that we're in. There's probably sub a thousand. Yeah. To be fair, like way sub of a thousand. You know. Um, so, it, and then we hear, you know, lately we've been hearing scuttlebutt about people having a hard time buying land. And, um, you know, it's funny, a, a friend and partner of mine, you know, who doesn't, because he's got his uh, young kids, doesn't really listen to the podcast, doesn't, just does his thing. And, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, you're buying land in Costilla for, oh, $1,000? Really? Five, eight? It's like, really? Oh, yeah, it just meant, like, doesn't, it doesn't doesn't even know that there's people out there saying that there's a shortage of land that people are buying right it's just he's just executing on the model and buying land left and right and uh yeah. so I, you know there's not a lot of us doing this we're not we haven't you know gone to the point where we've uh, pushed land prices up or none of us can make deals anymore you just have to mail consistently you just have to and if you're not getting results Maybe you have to alter your price point, maybe alter your area slightly, but just keep mailing. So um, so this is sort of in line with what we were just talking about, right? You know, hey, there's so many of us doing this. No, not really. Uh, yeah. And there's people that don't even pay attention yeah. to anything and just keep mailing and buying property at prices that would make you go, what? <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Things I, that make I, you go, hmm? Yeah. Oh, there it is. There's the 90s reference. Um, I mean, I, you know, I went away from a a pretty well-known area uh, because I was just sort of sick and tired of it. Uh, And then I came back to it and it was, you know, I sent out, I sent out a bunch of mailers. I didn't get, I didn't get the great response. And I was like, oh, let me, let me go just adjust my prices. Not by a lot either too. And then everything just sort of went back to normal. It's not a big deal. You know, I, somebody asked me the other day, they're like, well, you know, isn't that like, Aren't you spending like two, three hundred dollars more on that property? It's a, this is a you know five thousand dollar property. It's a little bit. It's not a hundred dollar a month, or sorry, a hundred dollar you know, you know square. Um, and I'm like, yeah, but we're making up for it on the back end. So who cares? Yeah. I'm actually making more money right now <laughs> than, than I was yes. before on those properties. So who cares? Yeah. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. Did you make four hundred and thirty-two percent instead of four hundred and fifty percent? Like, oh, <laughs> oh, so I feel bad for you. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, uh, that, you know, you guys bring up good points. Uh, the market is massive. Uh, there's no way we're going to saturate the market. So I would just encourage everybody, yeah. everybody who runs into us willy nilly on YouTube, which every once in a while I talk to somebody, they're like, yeah, I, I read Mark's book and then I went to YouTube and found you goofballs. Um, <laughs> so Imagine going from Mark's book, Dirt Rich, which is a really great book about the business and about Mark's journey, and then going to the YouTube channel and seeing the the three nightcap guys, which, you know, we never tell people our names. We should probably do that. Oh, okay. Like, I'm Mo, Larry, and Curly. <laughs> you're Curly. You're Mo. I'm Larry. Definitely and, Mo. Yeah, you're definitely Mo. I'm sure. I'm the salty one. Yeah. I'm, uh... But but anyway, it's kind of it's kind of fun because uh, everyone saw you you know you run into somebody who's never heard of the business model and then they they run into Mark's book or listen to his podcast like we did or now they're finding uh, the Land Geek guys on YouTube and they're like what's this all about Well, give us a call. Let's talk. We'll just tell you how this business changed our lives. We're three regular guys in three different professions, uh, and I guess what's the what's the thing we have in common, guys? We we had a strong why, awesome. and oh. yeah, awesome. Uh, sweatsitos, tracksuits. We love tracksuits. Um, and uh, I don't know. We, we had the drive to to work an hour or two a day in this, and look what happened a few years later. Doesn't yeah. suck. I was um, working last night in the uh, office hours. For for those of you who don't know, we have with flight school at the tail end. You have five sessions with, uh, you know, myself or Scott or Taria, uh, and we we assist people. And, you know, Scott, they were all of them were buying properties, and uh, yeah. pretty much all of them were doing deals. And 
it just again just you know this it just reinforced to me um, that you know you could have an abundance mentality not a scarcity mentality uh, they're all buying land and these are all in areas where we would traditionally think are good areas to work and they're selling land and just inspiring to see them and they, these people are changing lives I mean one person had a $7,500 purchase with a $32,000 term sale another tw same person like a $2,800 purchase with a $14,000 cash sale wow. it's like, this is happening inside flight school by the way inside flight school like it's not even not even done flight school yeah. And uh, think about the ROI he's already generated for that flight school investment. So, you know, this is just something that you have to, you know, just commit to and stay consistent with, and the results will come. If you build it, he will come. What's that movie? Exactly. What, 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 what movie is that? Build of Dreams. I what, would guess that's 19. What year? No. Uh, 86. No. 92. It's 89 or 90, one of the two. I'm gonna guess. Uh, I'm gonna guess 1990. That's. You look it up. Look it up. I'll look it up. Your mom. Did I tell uh, you guys? I was. Did I tell you guys about watching the uh, the money thing on Netflix? No. Did I tell you guys about that? So there's like this uh, like documentary kind of a thing on just on money, just like in okay. general. It's like a, it's a bunch of different episodes, and we started watching it, and and uh, one of them was about like internet scams. And they're like, oh, okay. you got to stay away. You got to. Oh, they never work. They just kept going and going and going. I'm sitting there, I'm looking at my wife, and I'm like, and my kids are watching. So I'm like, Jackson, Patrick, they never work, except except for this one, except for the thing that we do, that's sending you to private school, that, right? That you know, that's buying mom a new car, that that you know is doing all these things for us, except for that one. They're all, but they're all a scam. And my yeah. son was like, well, how do how would I know the difference? And I'm like. That's a great question. Like, I don't know. You got to go do your research. <laughs> well, but it was yeah. so weird. I'm like, yeah. this woman is, I'm like, this woman is the problem. She's boxing people in to being W-2 employees and not trying anything right. new and just confirming with confirmation bias what people already believe to be true, which is like, hey, no way could I go, you know, make 500% of my money, you know, selling a piece of dirt that I wouldn't want to buy myself. And I'm like, I feel bad. I feel bad for people who watch this Netflix series and are like, yep, I'm going to discount all this kind of stuff because Netflix said that it was bad. So I'm going to stay in my W-2 job and be pissed off for the rest of my life. Right. You know what's bad is when – but what's bad because really, really, of course, there's land investing. There's probably some several other ones that will work. But the problem is you have to have the grit and the wherewithal and, and the ability to stay with it, have the stick to as someone I, I know likes to say – and, and actually just continue doing it because nothing is an overnight success, right? It all takes that that, that dedication and, and the ability to stick with it. So it's not that a lot of these things don't work, unfortunately. It's that people don't work them. They, they think that, okay, I'm going to go to the gym for a couple of weeks. How come I'm not fit? This gym doesn't work. This gym is broken. This gym is a lie. <laughs> Um, I went to the gym twice. What the hell? And the, even all these pieces of equipment that they sell, whatever it might be, they do work if you stay consistent to them. So they all have merit and benefit. The problem is internally within us, right? The, the dedication, the commitment. To, are we going to stick with it? Are we going to actually see it through to the end? And, uh, you know, I think that uh, it's um, it's not very common for people to stick with things uh, these days, right? No matter what it is, especially if, a new business model. And, and that's the thing of it, is if you keep it simple, if you, if you stick with exercise consistently a little bit every day, you're going to be more fit. If you stick with a healthy diet consistently a little bit every day, yeah, you're, you're going to experience decreased blood, you're going to experience improved blood pressure, decreased blood sugar levels, decreased weight, healthier bones. If you stick with this business a little bit every day, and you just do that consistently, you will arrive. Just like we had a pretty awesome roundtable uh, this week, Matt Forbes. We celebrated the retirement. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. Uh, I shouldn't spoil it in the community. I'm not. I'm not going to spoil it. We we celebrated the retirement of a land geek in the community. The this episode will air next week. It, I thought it was an amazing episode of the roundtable. 
And this, what's that? It's like, text me, like I want to know who this is. Yeah, I know, right? Track me or something. I know, we can't talk about it till next week. But anyway, uh, that he, this person is the shining example of just sticking with it a little bit every day. And I guarantee you this guy, because of the, because of the job he had before, there were days where he probably wasn't able to put a whole lot into it or very little bit, kind of like I did. Like, I'm working 50 hours a week. I have four kids. Like, there were days when I couldn't do anything, but I did a little bit when I could, and look what happened. So that's what I compel everybody to listen. Everybody who's listening to this, just think of it that way. And it's not an overnight success. It's a journey. It's a marathon. Um, it's, a long, it's, it's a long way, but what's cool about this business is you can go buy a property for a few hundred dollars and you can sell it for a thousand dollars and you don't need to go spend twenty five thousand dollars setting up your company you don't need to go drop all this money it's not like you're wholesaling a house and you need to buy the freaking house first right you can start small and then prove it to yourself and then scale it you get to do that with this yeah. which is why it's so good and